Well, good morning. It is Thursday, September 16th. I'm Danielle Wiggins with your 3 News Now morning update. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me on the WKYC Facebook and YouTube pages. We start with Holly, who is tracking a very seasonal Thursday. Holly. Danielle, thank you. And gosh, this day is just lovely. And uh, after starting off in the 50s, we're climbing into the 70s. Tons of sunshine. Some of you did have some patchy fog earlier this morning, but obviously that's out of here. And the weather is looking picture perfect and very seasonal today. You know, we've had a lot of humidity lately today that's low and temperatures are pretty close to where they should be for highs, which is mid 70s this time of the year. As we get into tomorrow, it won't be quite as cool to start, but still very pleasant. Lows will be in the 60s tonight, and we will warm into the 80s as we head into your Friday. Those blips of green are just simply cloud cover as we get into tomorrow. But by Saturday, we could see some isolated shower and storm chances. Nothing that's going to wash out the weekend at all. In fact, they'll pass through. It'll be that, and uh, we're right back to sunshine. That being said, forecast for the rest of today, beautiful. Upper 70s. Sunny, low humidity, nice light winds. Enjoy every moment. Tomorrow we're back in the 80s. We'll call it mostly sunny skies tomorrow. And uh, then isolated shower and storm chances for Saturday. Sunday is going to be warm. Browns game right here. And uh, yeah, it is going to be beautiful for that. Getting into next week, the official start of autumn and still trending very much above normal with highs in the 80s and some scattered showers and thunderstorms. Danielle, back to you. Alrighty, thank you so much, Holly. Okay, let's start with the latest on the coronavirus here in Ohio. The state reported 7,747 new cases Wednesday. That's up 400 from Tuesday and almost 1,000 from last week. It also pushes our 21 day average above 6,000. And with these high numbers, we've been checking in with local hospitals. We found that Akron Children's Hospital's Pediatric Intensive Care Unit is over capacity. They tell us they saw the highest number of kids hospitalized with COVID-19 on Tuesday. On top of the COVID-19 cases, the ICU is also dealing with a number of community respiratory infections like RSV. That said, Akron Children's, along with Metro Health, UH, and the Cleveland Clinic say despite seeing a rise in cases, they are not at the point of turning patients away, but they are facing another big issue staffing is there's a labor shortage right now you know in all sectors of the economy the combination of covid with uh, you know less people that are able to work right now which are making things difficult all the hospitals we talk to of course reiterate that the best way to protect yourself is by getting vaccinated and some health care workers, well, they want their voices heard as they stage a protest outside Akron Children's Hospital, rallying against the hospital's vaccine requirement for workers. The hospital is requiring all workers get vaccinated or face regular testing. And it's the steady increase in COVID-19 cases that prompted a universal indoor masking advisory in Cuyahoga County. County Executive Armin Butish made the announcement Wednesday. Effective immediately, we're implementing a mask advisory for all Cuyahoga County residents, regardless of their vaccination status. Our mask advisory strongly urges masking in all indoor areas to prevent a crisis of COVID cases, hospitalizations, and fatalities. He's urging businesses to enforce the use of masks and for schools to make them a requirement for all students and staff. However, this is not a mandate and will not be enforced with fines or penalties. Butish did not address why he issued an advisory instead of a mandate, which would require county council approval. And when it comes to the COVID-19 vaccine, Pfizer says new data shows that booster shots may be needed six months after primary doses. The data comes days before the FDA's advisory committee is set to discuss the company's application for COVID-19 booster shots. Pfizer BioNTech says that a third shot will be safe and necessary for most Americans to take. Early data suggests the effectiveness of the vaccine decreases after six to eight months and getting a booster around that time will help maintain a high level of protection.
And as I said, the FDA's Independent Advisory Committee will meet on Friday to discuss the latest data on giving a booster shot to all Americans. The CDC will then have to decide who gets it. The Biden administration is aiming for this Monday to be the day booster shots will be available. And major plans are in the work to make over the spaces along the Cuyahoga River, expanding downtown and revitalizing the region. It's called Vision for the Valley. The vision includes thousands of housing units, office space, and more public access to the river's edge, something the public has missed out on with much of the river not utilized. This plan is designed to help guide future planning. In total, it could mean spending billions of dollars over the next 30 30 years, much of it on new infrastructure. This plan complements and connects to major initiatives throughout our city, such as the Lakefront Vision and the Baseball Stadium, the Sherwin-Williams headquarters, and also projects throughout Ohio City. And an update this morning on the Sherwin-Williams new headquarters project. The company announced it has selected five minority construction management firms to work on both its global headquarters and the research and development center in Brecksville. Each firm chosen is minority or female owned, all based in Northeast Ohio. The companies joining the project are Adrian Maldonado and Associates, the AKA team, Ozan Construction Company, RL Hill Management Services, and Regency Construction Services. Cleveland officials just advanced plans for the headquarters yesterday. The final plans will be submitted on November 16th. Okay, well, let's get you to three local headlines now. Here's three things that you need to know this morning. First, Cleveland police are investigating a shooting on Cleveland's west side last night. Two people were shot on West 25th Street and Lorraine. It happened at Market Square. Now, that's across the street from the west side market. Both men were taken to Metro Health, but still no word on their conditions this morning. No arrests have been made. And a message for parents in Rocky River as a new viral social media challenge takes over several schools in the district. So it's called Devious Lick and being posted on TikTok. So this is video we found of the challenge, but it's not from Rocky River. The challenge encourages students to damage and steal items inside their school. Then they post the videos on the app showing off what they took. Rocky River police say this all started inside school bathrooms in the district. Uh, they were removing soap dispensers and paper towel dispensers. At one point, they removed some uh, PVC piping from underneath the sink and shoved it in a toilet to clog it. Four schools within the district have had damage, with the high school and middle school seeing the most, with a total of six bathrooms tampered with. Police tell us they first became aware of this problem last Friday. And finally, the Akron Municipal Court hosted outdoor weddings all day at Cascade Plaza Wednesday. Okay, and it was an extra special day for one family. Take a look at this. A father and son took part getting married at the same time. Father Gary Green with Kathy Saunders and his son Jalen Green tied the knot with Ida Coffey. So congratulations to all the happy couples. Well, thank you for taking time to join me for this 3 News Now morning update. Our digital team will continue to bring you the stories making headlines around Northeast Ohio and beyond. Make sure you continue to check our social media pages and WKYC.com throughout the day. And don't forget, yes, we are getting you ready for the Cleveland Browns season home opener against the Texans. Yes, yes, we start this tomorrow. We will be live at First Energy Stadium tomorrow morning all morning long. Yes, Sunday can't get here fast enough. Well, I'm Danielle Wiggins and I'll see you Friday morning as well on go starting at 4 30 a.m. Have a great day everybody and keep on persevering.